Hello and welcome to this May 13th, 2010 video version of Invested Central's Chart of the Day. I'm Tom Boley, Invested Central's Chief Market Strategist, and it's my pleasure to provide you with today's Chart of the Day. This Chart of the Day is brought to you by StockCharts.com, simply the web's best financial charts. Today we're looking at the NASDAQ 100 index. Um, on stock charts, that ticker symbol is the dollar sign NDX. This is a four-month chart of the NDX. You can see that when the market bottomed back in early February, the NDX printed this hammer on the bottom, and then we started moving higher, continued moving higher for better than two months, actually about two and a half months before we recently uh, started seeing some weakness. Now, from a technical perspective, um, you know, sometimes the timing, trying to get the timing on a pullback uh, can be very difficult. Uh, when you take a look at the market here, the NDX was climbing uh, off of the early February lows and into early March we started printing overbought conditions. You can see the RSI right here moved up past 70. Stochastics were already in the 90s. So it was really about the second week of March that we began to print overbought readings. But take a look at how long these readings remained overbought all the way until the end of April. So really for about seven weeks we had overbought conditions on both the RSI and stochastics before the market finally topped. Now a couple things come to mind. Number one, um, it kind of teaches us that you really want to be careful trying to short a market when it's in an uptrend. Even when you start seeing some signs of overbought conditions, it can be very difficult to try and uh, short a market because overbought can remain overbought for a long period of time, as was demonstrated here during this seven week period. Now, when we finally do move down, because we were overbought for so long, many times that move to the downside can be very swift and painful. Now, there was no way of telling or of uh, forecasting the kind of drop that we saw in the market, but it was an indication, you know, those overbought conditions that were extended for a long period of time, that was an indication that we could see a swift move to the downside, and we did. The other thing that I thought was interesting is right around mid-March, maybe the third, fourth week of March, you can see the MACD started to roll over. So even though prices kept moving higher, we actually topped on the MACD on the NDX back around March 23rd, March 24th. Um, so even the negative divergence, uh, uh, even though we were printing it for about four weeks or so, that didn't kick in until we had made about three or four higher highs in price without that corresponding move on the MACD. Now, there's a lot of folks, I think, who want to try and short the market every time the market moves higher. And I think we have to be careful because of the things that I just showed. We we had overbought conditions. The market kept going up. We had a negative divergence. The market kept going up. What I prefer to do is if you want to short, let the market essentially break down first. And then as it comes back up to retest the breakdown area, that would be an interesting area to think about shorting the index or or playing an ETF that shorts the index. In this case, the QID is a juiced ETF that actually goes down at a rate of two to one uh, versus the NDX. In other words, if the if the Nasdaq um, 100 actually drops by say two percent, the QID will benefit and it will actually go up by four percent. Now, I you know if you're going to short. I like shorting in this resistance range. We broke down below 2,000. We broke down below the 50-day. Now as we climb back up, we've got the 50-day at 1965, the 20-day at 1972. We've got this whole uh, range in here that moves all the way up to price resistance, which is at 2,000, and the trend line, which currently is about 2010 to 2015 and is declining every day. This is a range I'd consider uh, uh, jumping in on the QID. If you break above this trend line, that's where I draw the line in the sand. To the downside, I think you got to watch these gaps. You start making money, these juiced ETFs, you need to take the money quickly rather than hold too long. I hope you've enjoyed our presentation today. Be sure to check out our chart of the day every day at investedcentral.com. While you're there, sign up for our free weekly Market Pulse newsletter and have the chart of the day emailed directly to you. Happy trading.